asking to have data on a number of fronts from Tony. One is to break down all the national budgets, how they're spent in the rural land in each of the constituencies, but also on particular topics, how money is spent across a number of authorities, whether it be, say, the police, whether it be the local authority, whether it be the fire brigade, whether it be housing associations. And this is particularly important when we consider antisocial behaviour. And I'm going to um, change some of the, uh, the agenda to fit uh, Tony's presentation in before we go on to the other work in the main report on antisocial behaviour. Partly because it will make more sense, <coughs> but secondly, it will begin to change the whole debate that we have at a constituency, at a council and at a national level. I can't underestimate the importance of actually having this data. But before um, we begin, can I just ask members if they've got any declarations of interest uh, relating to, to, to today's agenda which they wish to declare? Right, Phil? Yeah, uh, on item three, I need to declare an interest in the items which refer to Lodestar Communities Trust because I'm chair of that. Great. Um, right. I have a question about how many bits of rubbish have been cleared up on that one. So, once you've declared your interest on that, that would be good. Uh, any other declarations of interest? Then we are to minutes. Um, can I sign the record? The minutes yeah. is a correct record? Yeah. All right. Are there matters arising people wish to raise which are separate from what is going to come up from your agenda, please. Uh, this is one thing, please, Chair. Um, there is, in the minutes, a reference to the um, report we had last time on the electoral register. I just want to point out, for just from my particular report, I've noticed that the number of people registered has gone down by 3.5%. Just kind of putting that out as a point of information, I'm wondering whether others have noticed or whether there's information available for the rest of the constituency because I'm also concerned about the new regime and how that, that's affecting registration. So I want to you think that's the point of the new measure yeah. to get people yeah. off the road. It's actually more about less than, than the um, electoral office were expecting. They expected uh, a drop of around about 8%. So I think they've actually done quite well. It's not great that there is a drop, but it's better than they thought on this transfer. Very really good. All right, now, one of the main aims is not only for us to be reporting back on the decisions we made at the previous meeting and developing a program, but for people who are constituents to ask questions and ask them of council officers. So I'm really anxious that we uh, give half the meeting, as we've done in the other uh, times, for that question and answer session. And that leaves aside the fact that Everton playing tonight I think some people will have their minds uh, concentrated on that. All right, let's start to go through the constituency manager's update. And the first item, Joe, um, and this gives me an opportunity to introduce you. Uh, as you know, we said goodbye to Dawn last time. Uh, we say hello to Joe uh, this time. Um, and could you just report the guts of what we need to know about the town talk and where we are, what we need to decide, and we need to decide anything, Joe? <coughs> Uh, just before I do town talk, I just want to um, introduce you to a couple of new people as well. It's uh, Georgie Minery, who's the Inspector of Neighbourhood Policing and also Sergeant Mike from Skill. They, they've come today and so I just would like to say um, to welcome them, along with Kim Dawson, who's the Community Engagement Officer um, for the Office of Police and Crime Commissioning. So just thank you for coming and I just wanted to, to be introduced to everybody. Great. And also they have done a seven weeks update report um, at very short notice, so thanks for that. And they're on the table outside if uh, you would like to pick up a copy of that. Very good. Okay, uh, town talk. Um, this was commissioned um, through the constituency committee budget 1314 and um, 20K, 50k of that money, um, 20k of that was allocated for a newsletter to go to and uh, it's actually gone and been delivered and there's uh, copy, hard copies on the table outside and it's got a lot of different information about community events and community services 
Um, and actually feedback has been very positive. We've had a few emails in from uh, Trappian Community Project and the Viking Centre and also um, other community groups including uh, Kate's for Wirral saying what a, an excellent newsletter it is and uh, that they're, they're very pleased that it's, it's gone out to um, the whole of Beckham constituency. Any comments on the, uh, the publication? What lessons do we learn for the next one? Possibly speak up, please. I'm trying. Thank there's, a, there's a microphone. Um, well, actually, I know we have some very negative comments to make about it. I wouldn't like to put words <coughs> into his mouth, but I think it might be worthwhile circulating members and asking them if they've got any comments to make. I've got some questions I'd like to ask, um, but I, I probably want to have a think about how I phrase them. Um, but I, I don't think it's got universal um, applause when it comes to the government. No, it would be amazing if it's that's our first effort. Um, and, how we change it will depend on the feedback. So the more constructive uh, response we can get, the better. Um, and Alan? Yeah, I mean, uh, exactly. I think it, as a first go, it, it, it may be okay, but it, it doesn't exactly, I'm sure it could be improved. It doesn't quite grab you <coughs> as well as it perhaps could. Um, even the title sort of bringing the constitutional theory. I think it, it needs to be sort of a little bit sparkier and, and, and brighter. But it, and, and I also think the typeface is probably a little bit too uh, too small actually for some people with uh, with eyesight problems. So um, it, you know it's okay to sort of, but I do think we do need to get some feedback and try to improve it for the future edition. Well, no, and well, that's the kind of questions around that that I've been wanting to ask. Um, but I think involved in the last of the table was very critical. Yeah, LCD uh, won the tender, and uh, so they set up the editorial group and get all the different articles together. Um, but Tiger actually did printing in the graphics. And do you know who's doing, doing the actual I don't know, the back by now and, and the logistics. And could we make sure that people are like living and getting the living wage? Yeah. But any other feedback, please let's have it. The other one has given some about typeface and size. Um, it's also about the content of the one we use. What's the sort of news that we should be reporting? No, I was just going to say, I mean, I've not actually received one yet. Have you? So not like this, we'll read it ahead Well, I think we'll be receiving them soon. Yeah. All right. Very good. Okay. So if anyone's got any stories that they'd like, an article that they'd like to contribute to it, um, please do let us know. We'll pass it on to the editorial team. All right. Very good. And next is improving the environment. You will know that the aim of this grant was to bring relief to our long-suffering constituents around the muck thrown around where they live. And the aim was we were trying to get um, putting some real pressure on the main contractor who we will be as we build up our analysis of data about monies, inputs <coughs> and outcomes, we'll be putting pressure on all these um, main contracts. So the aim was to have a small group of um, people who've been unemployed to actually take the rubbish. And I'd love to have the report back. And I have to say, I was slightly dismayed at reading the report. And the last thing I wanted to learn was all the moves made before one actually picks up a settee or an armchair or whatever it is. I thought they were just going to go out there and pick it up, not make these <coughs> endless reports like we've got here. So who, who will actually speak to this? Anyone?
feedback from them today that they have cleared uh, Newark Close, Marcus Street, Bolchester Road, Rock Ferry, Mersey Rail Station, and Falls Road, Street Oxford Road. So they have, a, they have done six sites so far, uh, but there are a lot of sites that they've got in their action plan that they haven't yet done. Um, so I'll follow up on that. And I don't think that they've actually um, using one of the people to, to be part of the project either. So. Can I ask that we develop some sort of a protocol that the street see, so that if a confirmed head of the local member or a member of the public member you know, rings up and reports some flight ticking, that it gets put through to the uh, head constituency manager or, or the other receiver of this from the government constituency, so it gets uh, picked up yeah. as a result of the extra resource that we've yeah. in and not just accommodated for the normal street see. Because you have got your reactive light, I think. Well, I'm sorry, it's three weeks later. Yeah. 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 I mean, my understanding is the, the, the sort of initial um, <coughs> way this is being developed is that there are 18 sites which we as elected members have identified, um, which are listed in, in, the, um, in the papers, and those are the 18 sites that um, LCT are clearing up. Now, I don't have up-to-date information on whether they're up to the 18 sites, but um, that was the initial commission that they were given based on what we all around the table had said were the, the worst um, sites. So I, I think, you know, for the next meeting we just need to have a report on how many of these have been, have been cleared up. But I also want, given that we've actually met, paid the main contractor even more money to do the job I thought they were being paid to do in the first place, I think it would be really valuable if members, in spotting that this, this foul, uh, examples of this foul behaviour, just throwing things out, and who then report it to Street C, could also, because it won't work otherwise, report it to Joe. And I think I, I'd like us to have next time audit how long did it take the contractors who have been paid twice over, in my view, to do a job about clearing up the borough. How long does it actually take them to actually clear some of this place? Thanks, sorry. Sorry. Just, just, just for clarification, there's the, 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 the standard street scene uh, operation which, which we pay differ to. Oh, to yeah. the, these 18 sites are over and above that, the yeah. LCT I know, but, but there's. Yes. Phil said is that they seem to fall into three distinct categories, don't they? One is um, uh, blot spots in terms of buildings falling down or not maintained, and in that category would be the houses by the library, which rather optimistically is described as in the process of demolition, though I would suggest they're just in the process of falling down on their own accord. Um, and also falls into that category, um, I think I, I spotted one in the ownership of Magenta, which uh, Magenta seems to be ignoring a, an, an empty home, which I think is wholly unacceptable, given discussions that we've had here in the past, and I'll certainly be pursuing that separately. So that's the first thing. <coughs> Difficult to ask Biffa to deal with sites like that, but they are clearly sites where we probably, that are having an impact on the Birkenhead environment. Some of them, like the library sites, are on main arterial routes, so give a totally poor impression of the town. The second category I would suggest is, uh, is dumping and litter on private land, which I, th I think Phil is outside of the scope of the contract. Now, I reported one of those sites uh, this week and got an email back just telling me it's private land. Now, I responded to the officer, pointing out 
that the council has powers to issue notices under at least two, two separate pieces of legislation requiring sites. Now, I shouldn't be telling the council that it has those powers. They should be telling me that's how they propose to deal with litter on private land. So, you know, there's an issue of joined up uh, thinking that isn't there. The third category, I think, is the category, Frank, that you're talking about, isn't it? That there's litter or dumping on land that we feel ought to fall into the purview of the, uh, of the contractor. Now, I'm, I think we need to know what's happening with these big sites that are falling down. Bulls Road, the library, etc. Well, well, you'll find, I'll, yeah, I mean, I, 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 every, every month I get something off, off an officer saying we're so close, we're so close, we're so close. But eventually, hopefully, something will come through. In terms of private land, that's probably where this fund comes in, is it? You know, for, for our people to go onto private land and well, clear it up. And in terms of the other land, that's about getting the contractors to do his job, isn't it? Well, getting the contractors to do what they're paid to do, which is clearly a task. I understood in your other two categories, and I think you were talking about this Now then, can we come on to the anti-social behaviour report? 
six grains. So there's, there's a bit of a difference there between rural and urban. Can everybody hear it? No, I can't. No. <coughs> figures you can see that Birkenhead constitutes 45% of overall crime figures reported. Now if you think of that from the perspective that Birkenhead's population only actually represents 28% of the overall population for Wales, there's a bit of a mismatch between those two. Moving on to section two, when you start to unpick those figures and just purely look at antisocial behaviour, during 2014 there were nearly 12,000 incidents of antisocial behaviour reported. That's 39% of the overall total crime figures reported. That's that 31,000 figure reported at the top. Now, quite significantly, Birkenhead constitutes the biggest proportion of those figures. 5,000 of that 12,000 is made up of incidents reported by Birkenhead residents. That's 43% of all antisocial behaviour. If you then equate that back to the overall level of crime, antisocial behaviour in Birkenhead constitutes 17% of the total crime reported. And that's quite a, a significant number. I'll pause here for a second. Is there any questions so far? Does that make sense? Everybody can see where this is leading, can't they? <laughs> we need the money. <laughs> it's, it's, it's been Christmas of anybody, but up until now, uh, our elected representatives are nowhere in the country actually have this sort of data to decide how budget should be distributed. And at our first meeting we made the decision that the major part of our extra cash would not go in doing normal 19th century handing out small checks to people to organisations to keep them happy. But we would try and crack this data. And you see there what um, Tony has given us the the crime total the antisocial behaviour as a total. Might you talk about the violence and sexual offences? Right, okay. I'll just I'll know the sum of it, but it's, it's not the third that. big thing that stands out for me. Okay. I'll just, I'll just, I'll conclude this section and I'll yeah, go right, on. Right. Um, so, look at the, the trends in antisocial behaviour, but they are, they are actually quite positive. Over the last four years, antisocial behaviour incidents have reduced. But when you, you dig into those figures, it's, it's quite interesting. But Tony, when you said that, could you just remind everybody, it's reduced by how much? Right. For, for Wirral overall, it's reduced by 19%. 19. 19%. For Birkenhead, it's 12%. For, for Wirral excluding Birkenhead, it's 24%. So, the non head rate of reduction is twice <coughs> as much. So it's positive that it's been reduced, but there's, there's something different happening within Birkenhead. And if I can <coughs> um, two conclusions from that, um, uh, Tony, uh, it could, would it, we could suggest, could we, from the figures you've just given us, that we're not getting our fair share of resources given the size of our problem. Um, and therefore, you expect our uh, success rate to be lower. Or, there's something peculiar about the crime of antisocial behaviour we committed in Birkenhead and not elsewhere, which make it that much more difficult for those who, are, who have a budget to counter it, to counter them. Yeah. But are there any other ways you could, you could interpret the data? I think the other uh, potential issues <coughs> the overall quantum of money spent is not one. Right. Um, 
Well, you'll come up, you'll come up so you've got allocation, you've, you've, got, you've, got, you've got the quantum, and there may be uh, peculiarities in terms of how antisocial behaviour is reported in treatment between the different constituencies. But if that could lead, given what we know from general studies, that people in poorer areas put up with more and are more reluctant to complain, that <coughs> these figures show. Birkenhead being cruelly exposed, more exposed than elsewhere. But if we had a, a reporting rate equal to the richer areas, we would expect this divergence to be bigger, wouldn't we? Yeah. Can I ask a question? Yeah. Questions, yes. These are just these incidents, yeah. because we yeah. have a way that residents can report into our community patrol yeah. and report antisocial behaviour. So does that include those statistics? Those figures there are purely based on the statistics. Now, part, part of the problem is we've got in terms of the overall data yeah. around antisocial behaviour is that there are lots of islands of data and information. Those islands don't join into one consolidated form of data. So in terms of, and and what, 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 what you may find is that there'll be duplication. You'll find yeah. multiple <coughs> agencies will call the same incidents, but they're slightly different. Yeah. 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 But what, what is interesting is that there is correlation between data sets. Yeah. yeah I, I, was, I mean, it's a, it's a fascinating point. I was just going to ask, because um, part, part of the reason we're doing this analysis is to see if, if any of the expenditure is based on any kind of um, assessment of needs. Um, so, just taking some of the headline figures. So, if Birkenhead accounts for 45% of all the crime in the world, um, are 45% of the totality of the budget spent? Is 45% of the totality of the budget spent in Birkenhead? Question. And if if 43% if of antisocial behaviour incidents take place in Birkenhead, is 43% of the budget? Money that goes into tackling antisocial behaviour spent in Birkenhead. I think if that we could then begin to get any kind of notion about whether it's just done randomly or if there is any kind of rational answer. So there's, there's a couple of issues there. Is that first of all, the, the budgets are not disaggregated at constituency level. Um, activity for dealings with antisocial behaviour, particularly within public services, is quite important. So if you, you look at the antisocial behaviour team that uh, is in this report, they don't actually have a case management system. So in terms of how they allocate their resources, they use quite sophisticated intelligence on antisocial behaviour to target their services. But the problem <coughs> is that they don't record what do they do as a result of that intelligence. So working back to from the activity that takes place, you, you can't do that analysis that intelligence because the data doesn't exist. But, I mean, it's literally, because we're in a new territory, this is not criticism of people who've been carrying out their functions as they've been required to. But why are you gently put it, Tony, that using high intelligence mm -hmm. to target their activity? We don't know that, do we? There's no way the data can tell us that. No, because we, we, we haven't got that out from the data. And what we haven't got, what we'll ask you to do if we may, I mean, to try and explain why it's gone down <coughs> faster elsewhere. I'd like to, if you could, to look at the police practice. Are, are there far more, is it far easier, far, far more likely, <coughs> say in rural West, for the, the, the police to move quickly for antisocial behaviour orders than here? So we've got now total figures of antisocial behaviour. I'd like to see if, when you can get onto this, Tony, can we match against that? What are the penalties in the four constituencies that have been applied against with those figures of antisocial behaviour? See whether there's <coughs> a consistent law enforcement policy between the four. So, before Pat can yes. just, just one final point. I mean, you, you've included information which is. Um, information that councillors are used to see about hotspots, because that's how the, the police, I think, build up their 
prioritise their resources. They, you know, they base their uh, efforts on where they've had most of the uh, reports of incidents of crime. So you would intuitively expect the, the, the resources to be focused in, in those hotspot areas, both around antisocial behaviour and other crimes. But it, I'm just wondering, and, and this is probably for the next iteration of this work, whether you could actually kind of put them in a monetary value on, on the amount of money that's spent. I'm, I'm just trying to trying to kind of think through how you maybe um, get under the skin of, of, of this idea of need, uh, a needs-based um, analysis of something. Yeah, I, I think I think the other issue uh, to, to caveat that reduction is that what would we need to do next is actually look at the time of our social behaviour because that that may Resulting that, that bear reaction What we've also got telling, isn't it, is the um, from the farm going their data. And again, sadly, the same pattern emerges about which areas are suffering most from arson as out that's actually going on. Are there further questions? Just out on this, on the data. Let's go round. So we we'll get it give a useful steer to Tony about the next stage of the work. Yeah, yeah, I mean, uh, I, I haven't studied this in, in detail, and it, as always with these things, it, it asks more questions than it answers in the end, because you, you can go on for, for some time. And, and, and I'm not sure about the the drop in in, in recorded crime. It, we, between Birkenhead and the, and the rest of, of Wirral. Um, it's a bit like the, the, the British Crime Survey and the, and the, <coughs> the levels of reported crime. Um, there clearly will be more resources that the police put into to Birkenhead, than, but is that enough, as, you know, as Phil rightly says, is that in, in line with the levels of crime? And probably because there's more resources go in there, they probably pick up and record more Criminal. I mean, there are more antisocial behaviour crimes committed in Birkenhead. I absolutely no doubt about that. But but they're probably uh, more of them are recorded in Birkenhead probably than they are in other parts of the, of the constituency. And maybe that has, to some degree, has affected the the uh, this apparent difference between the, the drop from 24% and 12%. But but I don't know. And we we need you know inevitably you need more information. I would agree that there is some, some noise in the data in terms of recording, but I would not attribute uh, a reduction of, of twice as much down to you know, what problems with data are going on. Pat? Yeah, it was just it was a broader question, really, but I wonder if the audience are going to try and help, so maybe it's in the report that I haven't read, but we have a definition of what, what it is. Yeah. <laughs> is that very clear? Maybe you could just clarify actually for because where does antisocial behaviour end and kind of other crimes begin? Yeah, yeah on, on page one there's, there's a page definition one. at the top. Um, that's that's taken from the Crime Disorder Act. Oh okay, so there's actually an official definition. There's, 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 there's an official definition. Um, there's also is it, is it straightforward to allocate criminal behaviour into well, the, the, the police do report the statistics on the line nationally. They're asked to report perhaps on that basis. But if you, um, I don't know if you've all got it, um, at the draft report, table two, your point is very valid because you can see that some of those activities are quite arbitrary, whether it goes into criminal damage or into antisocial behaviour. And the cases we have of Church Road are all <coughs> cases about criminal damage. And yet I think they were being classified as antisocial behaviour. When people's cars were being ruined. Um, that's criminal damage to anyone. But it, I, it was, um, they were reporting it as antisocial behaviour. So I think um, there's some interesting things there. Uh, Denise, there's the... And that was just a quick one, Frank. Um, I would probably say though less crime is reported in the head than anywhere else in the world. I can't, a lot of people just will not report it because of repercussions and, I mean, that goes on everywhere, but I would probably say less crime gets reported in bed. Yeah. 
Yeah, thanks for that. Yeah, I was just looking at page 12, just, just to try and get a grip of what the answer was to, to Phil's question. <coughs> are, are, are we getting our share of the money for the percentage um, reports? On page 12 of, of the report, Tony seems to imply, in fact, that we are. We're, we're getting around about 43% of the resource available. Um, based on, you know, the, the, so, so it, it strikes me that if we're, if we're getting the right amount of money, I mean, I, I'm not seeing the, the detail for the other areas where maybe the drop has been steeper, but we haven't had the same drop for the same, if you like, per percentage point investment, have we? And that's, I think that's what's puzzled me now. That, uh, I, I, think, I think there was maybe an assumption at the beginning that if we had the same resource that went into Will West, say, then we would see the same drop. Now we are getting the same resource that's gone into it, but we're not seeing the same drop. And I think I'd like that now analysed as to, I mean, it might be that the level of, of antisocial behaviour is worse. It might be underreported, but the whole thing can't really now just be placed on, on, um, on resource, can it? I mean, we might want to see a bigger drop, which might imply a larger funding pot. On page 12-13, Suggested that actually there's two parts of this budget. How do we try and hold the blue line? Secondly, how do we actually reduce the need for the blue line to be held? Um, and when the, it's alleged that in fact we're getting our fair share, is that the table before we took out sports development team work? It is, yeah. It is. Once you take, and what I'm trying to get us to see, we need at some stage to try and sell the sports development team because they're, they're really rather brilliant to work that they do. But I do think trying to occupy idle hands is actually a different activity from the process of how do we, when somebody is being roughed up by this behaviour, how do we respond and how do we counsel with that? So there's the immediate response one, there's the long term act, more activities about how do we prevent antisocial behaviour arising in the first place. And if we take that data out of the table, uh, all the assertions people have been making around here stand. <coughs> but we are not getting a fair share, to answer the first question, we are not getting a fair share on the basis of the reported uh, incident, let alone what the means and has in other cases <coughs> that people probably don't report as well in the as elsewhere. So ours is underestimated, elsewhere is overestimated. And then, please, this is no person in any can start us on a totally new conversation. Because once you, you, you look at table two, uh, some of the questions we now <coughs> want to put to the police, um, given those areas, um, the matter go on to look, the second most shocking thing of that table is actually violence and sexual offences. It's the second most common uh, reported crime to the police. Uh, that will raise very big questions about how these different headings are actually treated. Um, and again, not in the critics of anybody, but we've not had this data presented to us before, to actually ask these questions. Uh, but if you look at Birkenhead, uh, there's after the 5,000 plus antisocial <coughs> incidents, uh, so well over 1,700 are reported on violence and sexual offences. I mean, it's a horrendous figure. Um, but, so, again, this is the beginning of lots of questions about how we shape uh, the data. Is there any information on
main focus of this is, is on antisocial behaviour. It hasn't been <coughs> in those type of times. Or I can go away and tell you, all these days are lending themselves being broken down into postal districts. You can't take them down to the wall of that. You can't break it down. But within the wall of there will be a number of postal districts. Right? So, I mean, we can actually do subtotals within rules of where this is and where this is actually assigned. Um, any Tony? <coughs> well, uh, the, only, the, other, the other point I was going to make um, is I, I think, and I've spoken to Tony about this, I think we, we, we need to try and get under the skin a bit more of the amount of money the police spend on antisocial behaviour because I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm sure it's more than £79,500. It, 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 I suppose the question, my question is in terms of the, the core police budget, you know, <coughs> officers on, on the beat. PCSOs, I imagine a big part of their time is, is spent in investigating and hopefully solving anti instant antisocial behaviour. So it, it's got to be more than just two secondments to the World Antisocial Behaviour Team and that diversionary fund activity. So can we get some kind of indicative figures from the <coughs> about what proportion of their core budget that's spent in, in World and Birkin Head is actually spent on investigating and uh, clearing up? Yeah, I think as I mentioned at the beginning, this is a working program. Yeah, yeah. So again, yeah, those conversations are going on. Uh, similar conversations that we have with the fire service and also partners in social health. Uh, the gentle, the gentle you know, they, they are also resource uh, not so far as well, and that needs to be included into. Could you have a day Keep speaking up, please. George. Yeah. Tony, just for clarification, is most of this data police data? It is, but there's other agencies in there as well. There's five <coughs> in there, some social housing data in there. So, so, what I'm saying is perhaps there's a dissatisfaction from the person reporting with the way the police are dealing with it, and we don't really know what level of reporting is taking place at the social levels, or do you? We do. They do. They do, they do capture it. Very good. But, but as I said, this this is a, a work in progress at the moment. It is a snapshot. I, I anticipate there being far more richer information available to include in the reports. So you do consult with the social landlords. Yeah. We have. We started to engage, and we have to include the, the information in the report. Now, as this information gets out to the other constituencies, there'll be a loud cheer about the work that we're doing because it suggests. Uh, that in fact, the way the council has uh, distributed up to now is less than satisfactory. In the absence of this data, if you look at the antisocial behaviour budget um, and the increases which you voted through recently, if you didn't have this data, there was nothing else for you to do. You distributed it, you, you, you define equity by fairness, we share it the same way. What I'm suggesting is the data that Tony is coming up here, that is totally unfair distribution for Birkenhead. head. But in fact, um, in no way could you actually say we share, uh, every constituent gets a quarter of any increased money. I think also I want to suggest is that given that we are less successful in Birkenhead head in countering to social behaviour than elsewhere, we need now to, money's may have been allocated, therefore it's too late. But the idea of just when we get more money, piling it in the same ways, in the same operations, I think is inadequate. So if, for example, we had a different approach, I was down at the top of the precinct recently, um, watching how the gangs there behave, or the gang behaves, or they go off and do mayhem somewhere else. We clearly do not have a strategy to beat that gang. And if it continues to operate <coughs> that gang with the freedom that it has, then we're going to get some closures of some of those shots. So it will look even more derelict than it does now. And therefore, what I would make a plea for, we can't, we can't change everything all at once. But when we do get any extra money, or the council you decide, in your budget allocation, there should be more. 
that we might in Birkenhead look at the three or four worst black spots, whatever we call them, and actually ask the partners who we are working with, how do we spend the money differently to try and actually stop this, these laddos, because there are many are laddos, uh, causing this mayhem and such distress? And if, for example, we were looking at the top at the end of the precinct, um, before we get shops closed, with land with owners just giving up the ghost, because their staff are fed up with being roughed up by the gangs coming <coughs> and the gangs frighten away customers. I just think we need to think differently about how we're going to respond. Um, the, the idea of chasing these gangs around works, it doesn't. And we've actually, when we've got new money, we ought to be saying to the police, to our antisocial behaviour team, and others, how do we, we're not talking about large sums of money, because we've got the big large sums of money, but the, the big sum is already committed to staff in certain ways, which we probably want to change over time. We don't want people to feel uncomfortable about you know, and nervous about their, their prospects here. But I do think we need to think, when there's new money, the idea that we should just spend it, cut it up in the same old way, which we had to do before we started to get this data, is just not adequate. And when I, I wonder whether we might come to a, uh, a, a, ask people who, uh, in the public gallery, who are on the, also on the receiving end of this, if we had, as we've got a tiny amount of new money which may not have been allocated, um, I just like to hear how we might start to spend it in a way which protects those businesses. Right. Yes. Sorry. Let, uh, let me just say a couple of things. Please do. Because, uh, I need to hold my hands up. I'm the officer of the Dowry Charge. No, no, sorry. You you just hear you, but I should just stand up. Make questions when you stand up or sit down. <laughs> <laughs> that would be great, Mark, if you go to the side, because there would be a chance of people hearing you. Yeah. A couple of things, and, and I think it's, it's important, because I've, you know, my, my, my sort of uh, hands up here, but I've only since sort of December last year started getting involved in the look of this, this area. Uh, um, you should emphasize you've inherited the system. You have not been very long in the job. Okay, thank you. None of this, none of this is aimed at anybody personally. No, no, I understand what that. We de what we desperately get is a change of those figures, dramatic change of the figures. Yeah. Right. I, want, I want to say a couple of things. First of all, I absolutely welcome the piece of work that's been doing. And I've, I've spoke to Tony a number of times on, on, on the phone, both during leave last week and, and, and when other people are there. And I think, I think it is about a refreshing <coughs> way to start looking at those things. I think that's important. But I just wanted to put some bits in for contextualisation, really, because I think it's really important to do that. One, the figures at the moment don't pick up repeat offenders, and I think that's massively important. That when we start looking at the profile of those figures, and when we talk about Birkenhead and the numbers, it may be that the number of repeat offenders within there are actually residing in the Birkenhead area, and therefore, I'm not saying it's any excuse, I'm saying that will lead to the reason why there's more of that activity and those crimes in there, and hence why some of the schemes that have gone on, such as the Seven Beats programme and things of that nature, are fundamentally <coughs> only taking place in the Birkenhead area because the, the, the acceptance that there are those sorts of issues knocking around in that area. So that was the first bit, I think. And what I should have said, Bruce, to start off is that Tony and I have agreed that absolutely from this point on, we'll be working much closer together to try and make sure that we can that we can put some more strength behind this. Because picking ASB as a subject, we could have, you could have as a constituency, picked a number of subjects. We were talking about littering and waste, and it could have been that. And you'd have probably come to similar initial conclusions about the way that that's tackled and the way it's dealt with. <coughs> the reason we say that is there's a number of programmes, a number of services and activities going on which aren't included in here such as youth offending services for first time entry into the system, such as the youth engagement system that, that, that might, might, might hear about and, 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 the, and the sports and recreation participation that we started to capture and it's fantastic. What isn't here yet is the outfall of the Trouble Families programme, so how many of those people live in the Birkenhead area, the health figures and that data, and I know Frank, we've spoken about that, but the idea of this is fantastic because it almost promotes, I think, the general wish amongst the officers of all the agencies about this 
co-location co of this idea of a common think tank, an intelligence cell that can be the reciprocal arrangement for everybody, where these numbers and figures and statistics can be generated from and, and therefore dealt with in a consistent <coughs> manner. Because if you pick ASP out, some of those are reported as ASP, but I bet some of them are also reported as other types of crime simultaneously as when they're reported as ASP as well. So there's a couple of bits there as well. And my final point, and I'll sit down, because I, I, I'm the officer that's going to be looking at it and taking forward, is that I also want us to reflect that you're right to talk about budgets and you're right to talk about the numbers of resources, but in 2011, there were 30 people in the antisocial behaviour team dealing with it. There's been a reduction since then of however much, and I'm not saying it's the most, but we've heard reasons why, there is now only 11 people in the ASB team until the new resources go in, and that's the reason that it was really important we had those conversations, and I'm pleased that we've got extra resources coming in, so we can agree on a decision-making model of how we tackle this that meets the actual need rather than any idea that there's just a geographical spread in an equal way. Mark, you see, I'm not that necessarily that pleased you are getting more resources, but you cannot actually say how effective those resources will be. Uh, this building up this intelligence unit, we want it, so actually our policy is um, data led rather than what we just in our guts think actually might work. So it might well be, it would be brilliant if you're off to have more stuff, but it may not be. And until we actually got more uh, information about outcomes, we won't actually know that. No, but the simple, the simple bit, Frank, sorry, is that it's very much that there is, there is only a finite number of people to be able to investigate and deal with the cases coming in. So therefore, the lack of reporting could be because we're not being able to investigate the case quick enough to appease the, 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 the person reporting that in. So any resource coming in to increase that amount that we can actually do that one-to-one -one work with those, those, those victims is going to be better, I think. It's only better, Mark, if in fact it shows the outcomes of this. Having more people is not necessarily better for anybody. And good for those people who probably got, you know, a little bit of our crust. But actually, if we're looking at outcomes, it's not necessarily so. That's the big problem. This is what we're going to throw up. Can I just bring Annie in before I... Um? Yeah, can I just make a, a point from you, you raised about slicing up the cake? You know, the limited resources we've got have been divvied up between the four constituencies because the, the administration we've just set our budget and the, the four constituencies have got the same amount of money going forward for the forthcoming year. But within that budget resolution, we have said that we, we will be taking a, a review across the four constituencies of how the funding that's been given has has been spent towards the, our corporate priorities, addressing those inequalities, addressing poverty. But that, once that review is complete, <coughs> that we will be looking at where waiting needs to go. So we haven't been able to do that, Frank, because we haven't had the data. The data. And this is what this is all about, is getting the data and being able to say we can show that, you know, in Birkenhead, we have the resources. We've got to be able to have the evidence base to really demonstrate that. But I think the other key issue for me, and I haven't had the opportunity to read your report other than the executive summary uh, tone, but the really important thing about the RSLs, about Mersey Side Fire and Rescue Service, about our other social partners, and it is about this will pound and how we're joining forces and making that pound go a lot further. You know, instead of everybody duplicating and spending little pots of money and using the same data, let's get on the same data set, let's pool our resources, and let's make it more, you know, make it more effective uh, reviews and solutions to be able to use it for. So I think that's, you know, for me, that's the key, the, the key driver really here you know, in terms of, you know, how we, how we go forward. You know. Yeah, I mean, that was the, when we had our first meeting, that was our decision we made. So that in fact we could start to actually be able to, more intelligently than any other council, make decisions about its budget. It's beginning to actually, but, but I can, you'll be surprised that Tony's stuff is published. He, I mean, I got a, a reply from a member of um, Wirral West to a question, could I have the 
expenditure on benefits, each of the main benefits in Birkenhead, I was assured by the Minister that no such data existed. Uh, tell me that you have for us. So it does exist. So I've uh, great pleasure. I've sent it back to the member of the Royal West saying whether well, she answer questions properly. But what I was surprised in that <coughs> if you given look, again it's, it's population weighted, but given the numbers of the, how the pension and population are distributed over Wirral, I was shocked that the lowest expenditure of, of the winter fuel payment is actually in Birmingham. I mean, the, the campaigns that we're going to get from this, but we, until we Tony got us this data, nobody knew that. Everybody assumed these winter fuel payments went automatically. And I think we'll find with the under five budgets, the, the offer for two year olds and three year olds and four year olds, it would be very interesting to see whether in fact when that national budget is broken down, whether in fact uh, we are actually getting our first share. And that's, if I can bring in the gentleman <coughs> from McDonald's, because when I was in McDonald's, giving out apprenticeship awards uh, last week, I think it was, I don't know, a week before. Uh, I met Katie there, who was brilliantly done, got her apprenticeship award, but she was also talking to a little fellow in the corner. Uh, it turned out to be her son. So I said, this is the first mother I've had a chance, at least I thought necessary to ask. I said, Are you, did you get the two-year-old offer for your son? And she said, no. Is that getting the three-year-old problem? She said no. So I think as we start to dig up these figures, we're actually going to see whether when the national government thinks everybody's coming and everybody, for example, is getting their 50 hours of free child care, whether in fact it's actually borne out. But the gentleman from McDonald's, please come on, contribute. Hi everybody. I just wanted to uh, say firstly, it's great for us to get this data together. And um, for those who don't know me, I've, I've not only got a restaurant in uh, Charing Cross in uh, Birkenhead, but I've also got one in Bromborough and I've also got one in Wallasey, so I go to different constituents. So I do get an anecdotal picture from my customers and, uh, and obviously also the employees. I've got over 200 people that I employ, so I get a lot of feedback anecdotally when it comes down to those social behaviour. But particularly in Birkenhead, I'd say those figures are actually just the tip of the iceberg. Because there's a real reluctance for people to actually pick up the phone and call the police. And a large majority of that comes down to the fact that the groups in Birkenhead are so large and almost everybody needs to, everybody seems to know somebody in that group. So the potential for repercussion is significant, and that's the feeling on the street, whether it's a business, whether it's a resident, or whether it's an employee, to actually register that. So it is just the tip of the iceberg. If you're going to resolve those issues, you need well, to tackle you those groups. Now you just tell us, given that you have to put up <coughs> more than your fair share of antisocial behaviour uh, in the, the precinct of McDonald's, how many times of the incidents you have do you actually report to the police and get a, a number for? Um, probably about less than 10 percent. Less than 10 percent. Right. 9 percent of it you have to deal with yourself. Um, and you do, I mean, we do get a fantastic response from the police, <coughs> in particular, and I just want to highlight, you've recently done the uh, dispersal zones yeah. over set periods. That's the first time in five years we've had that weekend where we've increased our sales like that because you broke up the group and that helps the economic wealth of that community. So I'd like to thank you to do, for doing that and it's a real positive feedback. Uh, but we'd like more of it more often. Every the biggest risk of it is getting hold of those gangs and those gang leaders so that are getting groups of 15, 20, sometimes 25 you know, groups of kids that are between Literally from 11 till to 18, 19. A lot of them are drinking, a lot of them are passing drugs, a lot of them are battling <coughs> each other to actually play or cause either or that and the antisocial behaviour. And the police come and they run off in different groups, different directions, and they all meet back up again. And we're not getting scripts with those groups. And I think, Frank, when you went out in the evening with BBC, you saw some of that yourself. 
Uh, so that's a very real approach uh, that I think could potentially work. But if you're going to do additional spending, there's lots of different ways, and I'd, I'd hope that businesses like myself can be involved with that steering group. I know the gentleman spoke over there, and we, we very much like to be part of that group as well to help generate uh, ideas because I think Frank's right. We've got to make sure that we generate the spending where it's most needed because otherwise you're diluting it so far, you're never really going to have a significant impact. And if you're going to try things, and then if you can see results, then they're the ideas that can be shared around. But by diluting the finances, as has been happening over the years, you're never really going to get to that situation of what actually really works, what can be see the best practice and share with other constituency groups and actually improve the well-being of that local community. So we have, you know, businesses and I'm sure have got many ideas, but anecdotally in Wallasey, for example, we have had problems in the past, they've had a, ta a task force that we've been part of, we've had made significant impact. But the overall incidence of antisocial behaviour is far less than it is in Burton. The main majority of that is that the groups that are congregating are smaller. I've also got antisocial groups that impact us in Bromber as well, and they're smaller again, and a lot more, a lot different. But Birkenhead, definitely a special case, and that's where the money needs to be spent. Tony and then Denise, okay? Can I just respond to, to two points? The, the first one made by Mark, which is a good point about um, repeat incidents. The only thing I'd say about that is, is a repeat incident um, of poor outcome. And I, I'm just flagging that up, you know, so that I think there's, there's a quality issue there which we need to build into the analysis. Um, the other point was made by Anne around the, the real power, which is, which is a really good, good point. And it's, it's possibly looking at that from a different perspective and maybe spending money differently. Because when you look at some of the work which Mike Whitty and the sports development team are doing, from the type of investment they make, they actually save other partners money. So you know, that, that goes across multiple agencies. And Mike's working with the health department to try and quantify that further. Like that. But I do know that the type of intervention they offer not only tackle the antisocial behaviour, but they also dramatically save a lot of money for, for health partners at the same time. So it's, it's how we work with those partners and maybe get them to, to contribute to these type of issues. I'm sorry, I, I don't remember your name, but if we didn't have people like this guy employing people in Birkenhead, I mean, I don't know how he hasn't already locked up and gone home, threw away the key, because, but he's still there and he's still fighting his corner and he's employing people. So these are the, the type of employers and businesses we need to keep open. We really need, so they're the ones that need most of the help. Right. Can I just bring this together? Because we've had a really good innings, and I, um, that's, I think the, the information Kevin is getting for us is stunning. It's going to change the way the council performs. I'm uh, really pleased to hear from the new chief executive has <laughs> actually asked Tony's welcome. So we are the best we can paying from our constituency money. I think everybody sees how significant this, these data are the whole of Wirral. And actually once Wirral starts doing this, the other, all other local authorities as well. You know, it's starting actually a new era. I just wonder whether you might agree that although there's other things about what our antisocial behaviour plan is, we've got these days are beginning to blow up the plans. Might, would it be acceptable if, in a sense, um, some of the top table came back at the next meeting about how this begins to affect what our strategy is? And that we come back, both with more information from, from Tony, um, but also how we, respond, we, we now need to respond differently. And particularly taking up Paul's point in that in different areas, we may need different strategies. But if you've got a gang of five, it's different from dealing with a gang of 35. Um, and one of the ways we've always worked before is that as the police use the powers that Parliament has given them, if it's found that those powers are inadequate, I then have the chance of trying to convince Home Secretaries that 
we need to change the legislation, which I'm always pleased to <coughs> and convince people of that, of that need. So it's not just us fighting um, on our own. It is, as we fight, to realise how we need to shape legislation to help. But of course, it will come back to, again, how children are nurtured. This is a big, big fundamental question, isn't it? And and the public health department and the council have some really interesting and similarly frightening information for you uh, very shortly on this, but it, it, will, it, will, it will gain effect a uh, whole of that area of policy. So are, are you happy that we now, in a sense, uh, thank people for their contributions on this and move off antisocial behaviour uh, to start the public uh, yes, please, yes. I feel as though that if uh, maybe you want a contribution from the police uh, with, with regard to this. Please do. Can we do a short shout from the side? Yeah. So we can all hear you. Yeah. Good evening, everyone. Uh, Sergeant Mike Brunskill, I've got um, just over 22 years' experience as a police officer, uh, but I must confess I've, I've only been over on a little for a few weeks. Um, I've already met uh, most of the councillors and uh, I'm really impressed with, with the work that you're doing. Um, just some of the things that have, have, have come out on this, in terms of the, the antisocial behaviour and, and the figures and the breakdowns that you're given, I think it's really good because it, it will enable us to concentrate on our, our resources. But just to reassure you, I'm, I'm actually out on the street patrolling um, and I am aware of the issues and the problems that are going on and, and some of my staff. And there's, there's 58 of us that are actually going out <coughs> on, on the streets uh, actually tackling all, all of this kind of stuff. I'm dismayed to hear about people saying that people aren't, aren't reporting things. What I would say is please make sure your staff do, do report it. Um, the things, I mean, fantastic work that you're doing. Um, my previous uh, role was the Youth Engagement Sergeant for Merseyside Police. Um, and I know that young people sometimes are vilified and, you know, it's all, all antisocial behaviour sometimes gets blamed on them. What I'm going to say is the dispersal orders are effective and they have been effective, but we also need engagement as well. I've worked closely with the, the KICKS programme, both with Everton and Liverpool, and there was evaluation that was done. For every one, one pound spent on that, there's 19 pounds worth of uh, social value. So Mr Field is saying, how can we spend this money? So the social value comes in reduction of criminal justice. These are really effective things. <coughs> I know um, Alan from the Fire Service, um, he's getting Liverpool and, and one of the councillors who you're working with, uh, that's right, to, to get that in. We've got £10,000 now for Everton to come in and we're looking at them specifically targeting Birkenhead. Um, so there are things that are going on, but, but what I would say is, especially the businesses, we're there to support you, we're there to help you. But not just dispersal orders, we want things for them to do. Because there's no point just moving them on, because they'll just go to another place and, and, uh, and do that. So if anyone's got any questions or wants to speak to me after, after this meeting, please do so. Great. Thank you. And we are going to do, I hope, we'll have special topics for these meetings. I think one, Jim, you might report on our youth seminar. It will bring in a number of other activities, won't it? Well, Gina, as soon as that open, we'll have one of our meetings there. Yeah. yeah. So, 
Bill from Father Eric about um, participation. Can I now move to question, your questions? You've got 11. Um, so can I go through the list? And it's Tom Kershaw here. Have you got a question? Tom? Is Tom here? Can I ask Tom's question for him? If you look at the, the, um, his question, he's got some very good questions about the junction of Gerald Road and Shrewsbury Road, but he does make a major suggestion at the end. And that is, please consider removing the bus lanes on the road and make our roads safer. Is it all the first part of this question, Gerard Rage, Shrewsbury Rage, you also know. It's, if I can make sense, it, it certainly is in, in Oxford, and it's a welcome scheme. I think I think yeah. it will uh, help. I, I, I think the point in the question that that I'd noted was, was the lack of a uh, of a crossing facility. Uh, is this the same? Yes. Yeah. There, there was a lack of a crossing facility between uh, from um, Bidston Road all, all the way into town. So uh, that that was uh, that was an interesting one. Certainly, the top of Palm Grove is an extremely difficult place to uh, negotiate. Because um, there will be a number of people wanting to go from the Palm Grove area up into Oxford Village, um, so that might be worth uh, pursuing through uh, through highways. I, I haven't had time, in fact, to read the technical services response, but probably no. <laughs> I, can, I, can, I can probably I can probably guess what it is, but we just have to uh, <laughs> we just have to see. Again, you see, will be interesting is not only uh, is when the council again cannot do everything at once, but when it actually starts to look at these detailed questions, we actually will ask Tony the data, which tells us what uh, looking at the trend, for example, because uh, Tom's question is about safety, and we then can have data, see whether there, is, there are data before we have particular innovation to um, safety afterwards. And if the graph looks different, we can actually suggest, well, maybe the common view that bus lanes uh, promote safety might be questioned. That's all. But on the specific point, if you have been at the top part of, of Tom's question, um, an answer, Stuart. I, I, I think you're right. I mean, the answer doesn't reflect the question at stage and just glancing at it, you know. I mean certainly the bus the bus lane that runs through Prenton um, isn't really, it's not really a bus lane. I've never really sort of the point in it at all. Um, so you, you just you just start to wonder whether it's just it's just there for for show, you know, it's never used as a bus lane. It's a complete waste of waste of time. But, I mean can I mean can we say can we say that the, you know, that the response that we've had from technical services isn't actually an answer to the question that it appears that Tony is asking? Uh, yeah. Would it be appropriate to have a, an answer to the question, please? Would that be? Very good. That's okay, <laughs> another minute. We should have that. So, question two is uh, Alfred Denny. <coughs> is Alfred here? Is that the same person? No, it's not. Alfred? Alfred here? Right. Um, then, if you look at we actually got two or three questions. They're okay, Oxton ones, and I don't know if you want to take it. I mean, A, the business about whether people behave in Oxton without planning permission. And secondly, the problems that we have with the courtyard premises.
Yes, yeah, I mean, I, 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 I'd also, I, I, I had received a, 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 an email from, from Mr. Leonard as a, as a constituent, and, and actually, again, the, uh, the response from the planning department doesn't reflect actually the response that Mr. Leonard was given by the planning department initially that led him to contact me. And that the initial response from the planning department was that they don't, uh, in fact, investigate every enforcement complaint. Uh, they wait until there's a number of complaints, etc. But given that this was controversial at the time, uh, as a planning application uh, at the time, I asked for further information, which I'm still waiting for, unfortunately, off the council. So having now read this answer, I'm either assuming that the original answer given to Mr. Lennon and myself was wrong, in which case that's now changed, but I'll, I'll, I'll wait for my own confirmation of that, and that the, the breach um, that uh, Mr. Lennon originally referred to is now in train, and any other breaches of planning conditions will be uh, dealt with um, appropriately. Great. Um, I don't know if going to come up here, because I only just got hold of these questions. But can I put a question at the end, so <coughs> no one else would like a written answer, because it's come up before. How many people have been prosecuted for dumping rubbish over the last few years? And secondly, um, can we actually also have people have been prosecuted for, for dog fowl? But we are to question okay, three, yeah. which is... Um, <laughs>
Now there are automatic book uh, <coughs> tallies, right? So they've moved those further over, but they're still in there. Okay, I'll look into that one for you. Very good. Is um, Richard Neal here? Um, Richard Neal's got five questions. <laughs> They're fairly detailed. Um, really of interest to him. I'll come back to that in a moment. Let's see, is Robin, Jane, Robin Jones here to ask a question? Uh, is Ian Taylor here? Is Tony Vaughan here? Um, is Andrew Shoot here? Or is Rob Ellis here? Rob, would you like to, great, Rob, Rob, would you like to pick your question? Um, Doug Fallon, particularly in the Oxford Village area, um, I, I actually live on the King's Land, and that road is pretty <coughs> disgusting, um, and also there's unsufficient lighting, street lighting on Jimmy Street, and there's one uh, street lighting that actually down still, um, and I go down there quite often um, to the shops, and when it's dark, there could be new, like, dog prowlers, yeah. and I like stepping it, especially young kids. Well, what, well, what do you think, what, if, you, if you have the power to make one move, what do you think could most counter this? What one action? The dog problem is the worst one, and I actually think it's to install um, CCTV in that area. Um, so, council can actually put into the Could you, Phil, I mean, although I was making a plea about not tying the budget down for additional money, Part of that budget has got mobile. Uh, yeah, we put in this year. We're putting extra money in the budget this yeah. year for extra CCTV. Right, and they're mobile ones, aren't they? Right? Yeah. They are. So, Bob, you could actually that would be one way of counting, wouldn't it? The next move is then I will bring people in. If it's of good enough quality, we can then use it as English prosecutor. That's what we need, isn't it? Yeah. For people to actually learn allowing their dogs to do this if they're with them. Can be in trouble. Um, I'm just wondering, Frank, why technology? can't we use the car cam? The car cam gets used in the day at school, so why can't we use the car cam at the night? Because that's when most of it goes on in most of our areas. Right. And have a night camera on right. it instead Paul, of having to go and buy CCTV. Are you answering that, Paul? Yeah, I was just over that to the main street last week, um, knocking on doors, talking to people, and for some reason it's particularly bad in that road. And, uh, it's an only support. Ask Bill to take us away and we're going to have dog family's team. Now, I'm going to make the latest of that. <coughs> what action can they take given, you know, we've had one constituent, one council say how far it is. Sure, are you adding to that? Or I ask the lady. Uh, uh, I was going to ask you from Cassie, yeah. I was going to say a lot of the problems that we face in fairness <coughs> are due to the fact that Parliament makes it so difficult to enforce. Dog fowling legend. You've got to designate your land this, you've got to do dog control order that, you've got to, it just seems to be overly complicated for the crime that's being committed. It's a straightforward littering offence almost, isn't it? You know, so why have we got all of this palaver that actually we've got to designate this land and then we've got to give powers and the, the dog warden's got to be there at the time? I don't even know whether CCT evidence would be sufficient to, to launch any sort of prosecution at the moment. I think Parliament have made it too complicated. Are you looking for something possible to do? Um, if, there's, if there's anything in the, in the dog days of this Parliament or even in the next one, it's just got to be made that much easier to, for, for councils like our own to prosecute. Joe, actually in the minutes that we follow this up, both in actually looking whether we can propose to our services, how we can more simplify the law, and that when a suitable bill comes along, sadly I can't admit, well, my, my opportunities to initiate legislation are tiny. 
My ability to modify government legislation going through <laughs> is considerable, and therefore I would need to actually have a bill in the, which is called the long title that I could get the amendments that you're proposing onto the order paper to push it. So let, and then we'll have a bill in the first year of the next parliament. So let's well, let's do that. <laughs> Lay it back, please. Yeah, thank you. On the same point, um, I want my kids to go to school every day, and it's just. It's just such a problem, it's horrendous. But um, I've published Let's Go magazine, which is Will's family magazine. And last November, we didn't ask her about this new campaign that was being launched in Will, but these posters that were going up. The yeah, yeah, yeah. But we're watching you. Yeah. So they're great. Right. <coughs> the posters that are supposed to you know, let people think there is someone watching them. Yeah. But I haven't seen any anywhere. I don't know if any Devonshire Park. Any starters didn't want to be Sorry, can I just ask, Maura, when did it begin? I think it only started last month, it was one chosen area. I know Dick Hill in our, in our ward is the next one in right. March.